picking a chaff, picking a chaff, ha, 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 picking a chaff. Picking a chive. But if you enjoyed that plant-based pun, let us go and have a look at what else we've got growing on. But seriously, it's a video about growing fruit and veg. Oh, but I've got a really good pun. Yeah. Hello and welcome to another episode of Embrace Your Outdoor Space. My name's Tommy Cross and you get to join us on this glorious British summer's day. Sadly, the weather isn't up to much today, but we've got some incredible edibles to show you to brighten up your beds and borders or to put a smile on your plate. Juicy carrots, my precious juicy. They are like the precious because everything else wants to eat them. White fly, carrot fly, they all flock around. And you're probably gonna say, how can I grow carrots if I haven't got a garden? Well, you can grow them in a planter, you can grow them in an old bucket. There's one thing that will stunt the growth of your carrots, and that is poor soil. Stony soil or clay soil can make clumped carrots. We don't want clumped carrots. We want to have, again, happy hummus. Deep, rich, fertile, free draining in a sunny spot, and your carrots will be very, very happy. As a kid, this was me, pull out a carrot and you get that magnificent, vibrant orange appearing from the ground. You will not go back to shop-bought carrots if you can, because the taste is so rich, so fresh, so sweet, and that crunch. So how do you grow them if you've got window boxes? So look for the smaller varieties, which have been cultivated for shallow depths, things like Chantenay or Parisienne. Again, reuse something that you might have lying around the house, fill it with free draining, nutrient-rich compost and soil. It's got to have a bit of soil in there as well to get a bit of composition. Keep it moist and keep it in a sunny spot. If you're growing them in your plots, then you want to start making sure that the soil is prepared. I would say the end of the growing season, make sure you turn it over, enrich it with new compost, new minerals ready for the growing season ahead. So once you've prepared your ground and your growing medium, when should you sow? Well, I would sow in the cooler part of spring. So here in the UK, that would be mid to end of March. And all you need to do is create a furrow about one and a half, two centimeters deep. If you're going into the ground, as the juvenile part of the plant starts to appear, you probably worth putting a cloche over the top. And what I mean by that is a bit like a mini greenhouse or polytunnel. And you can buy those from most garden centers, or you can create your own one using a bit of old cling film if you've got some. And when it gets to this time of year, there's something else that knows they're growing, and that is carrot fly, and that can devastate your crop. But one of the best ways to put off the carrot fly, plant them amongst your onions. That smell of the onion will actually put off the carrot fly. It might not protect them entirely, but it'll do as much as nature can do in order to muster some natural protection. So these onions either side are almost acting like a guard of honor to protect my bounty of carrots down below. But if you are gonna grow them in rows, do them about 30 centimeters apart. The easiest way to identify if a carrot's good to go is when it starts putting on a show. Now you want to see the nib, the top of the carrot, starting to develop. And when it gets to about the size of a pudgy thumb, so here's one I prepared earlier, there's a pudgy thumb for you. When it starts to look like a big pudgy thumb sticking out the top, then it's good to start plucking and tucking in. Well, this next plant really does make me go core. It's the courgette. One of my favorites to grow, one of my favorites to eat. The courgette, or as it's known in America, the egg, eggplant. American courgette, I think. American courgette. Zucchini. Zucchini. Sorry, it was, I thought it was eggplant for a second. What's an eggplant? Satsuma, I think. Aubergine. It's an aubergine. Aubergine. Incidentally, if you want to cook this when you're growing it in your garden, cut it up really thin, throw it into a hot pan with plenty of oil, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of chili. It's a gardening show, not a cooking show. Trust me. But how do you grow this in your garden? And how do you grow it if you haven't got a garden? Well, 
don't be alarmed. You can grow this if you don't have big beds and borders, but first we need to sow. So when do we sow our courgette seeds? Now you can start as early as mid to end of March, but I wouldn't sow directly into the ground then. If you've got a greenhouse or you've got a conservatory or a good sunny spot with plenty of space, you can start your sowing into some seed trays. Preferably I would put the seed, individual seeds, into small pots. That way you're gonna get a good healthy plant. And you're gonna plant into a mixture of some organic rich material with some compost and a little bit of soil as well. So you've got a good composition of growing medium there and make sure they are watered regularly and they get plenty of this stuff. Sunlight, right on cue, thank you. Because these guys love the sun. It doesn't matter, however, if you're late to the garden party with these guys because when the soil temperature reaches that kind of optimum growing temperature, you can plant these out in seed all the way through the summer months because these will chuck out food like the clappers, as soon as they're in a happy position, they will start growing and giving you food and fruit all the way to the end of the summer. So if you do sow out into the ground and you want to go straight into your beds and borders, I would sow out in three seeds in an area about 50 centimeters apart. And it's all about survival of the fittest when it comes to courgette because you don't want them just to survive, you want them to thrive. So take away the weak link and then you're left with two happy, healthy, hearty plants that are gonna give you a hearty stock of food throughout the summer months. So that's when to sow. How do they grow? Well, they grow really well in a sunny spot, but you need to keep them well watered. And you can add a little bit of organic material around the base of the plant as it starts to grow throughout the summer months. And that will only supplement that root system. We always say the happier the plants above, the more food it's gonna throw out. And what you're looking for are these big, tactile leaves. They actually make some great foliage in their own right. And they also have a wonderful flower as well. Now they start off a really vibrant yellow and as pretty as they are, don't be tempted to pick those because that is the catalyst for all of your courgette. Courgette. Don't be tempted to pick these unless, however, you want to add a little bit of flair to your salad because they will pretty up a salad, but they're also edible. However, I would rather them stay on the plant and then from behind that flower, you'll start to see the growth of your courgette. But when do you graze? Well, the going gets good as soon as these mini courgettes turn into mighty marrows. Well, that's my preference anyway. Anything around about 10 centimeters upwards and they are going to form part of a hearty, healthy meal. As I mentioned, if you really want these to taste great, slice them up really thinly into a hot pan, a little bit of paprika, a little bit of garlic. Show afterwards, mate. Okay. I would let these grow to about 10 centimeters. Uh, I do like mine big. Love mine big. But you will, you. <laughs> but with size comes a sacrifice. You won't get that kind of raw, fresh, tangy, almost, they have a slight sweetness when they're picked fresh at the right size. So you sacrifice some of the flavor for size, but it will obviously go much further on the plate. Now, if you're thinking, well, I want to grow courgette, but I don't have big beds or borders, I don't have an allotment, I don't have any space in which to grow. Yes, you do, because one of the easiest ways to grow courgette is by buying one of these. <sighs> As if by magic in the edit. You have to do something in the edit now. Bing. I'm just going to not to make it. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really bad. <laughs> See, magical sound effects. You have to do something now. Now this is one of those collapsible garden waste bags. And I bought this from here in the UK, in one of our pound stores. I'm sure you've got Euro stores on mainland Europe. But this was a really inexpensive thing to buy. And it has a practical purpose in the garden to get rid of garden waste. Or you could fill this with a blend of manure, compost, a little bit of horticultural grit. So it's got a bit of substance and it's free draining. Punch a few holes in the bottom. And there you have one courgette container. Now, if you really want to make sure none of the mini beasts get in there and start devouring your courgettes in advance of you, just give it a quick cover over, maybe using a bit of muslin. So in order to get the light through, and allow that plant to grow happily and healthily, but make sure you keep them well watered. And if you want to add some organic feed to it, either around the root base, you could use something, again, like a bit of fresh manure around the base. I'd always recommend, if you can, an organic vegetable feed. So can you see in here? These stems here with the flower tip above. That's the start of the courgette. That is the flower. 
I don't know if you can see inside here, really vibrant orange yellow color. So you can use that and eat that uh, on your salads, but this is what we're after. And this will keep growing. And the more you pick throughout the growing season, when they're about 10 centimeters, the more it's gonna keep throwing out new growth and new courgettes. What's this? It's a bit of a show off. At first glance, it looks like a spinach, like a salad leaf, but then you have a look on the underside, you'll see this has got some really fluorescent foliage, pinky red, and underneath here, we've almost got a canary yellow going on on the underside, those veins, and this is chard. And what's chard? Well, it's a great substitute to spinach if you're getting bored with spinach, and this is incredibly easy to grow and makes great salad. You can use the outer leaves when they're very tender. You can just pick those and eat those. Or if you wanted to, when they get a little bit tougher, you can boil them almost like cabbage. And it's incredibly popular in the Balkans. And there's a lot of great recipes which include chard, but it also makes great ground coverage as well. So if you're thinking, well, I've got some bare patches in my beds and borders, and I wouldn't mind just covering them up with some interesting foliage, this makes a great addition. So how do you grow it? very, very easily. Very much like your salad leaves, you can sow them alongside them or in amongst them. You seed out thinly and you start that mid-spring. Again, I'm boring you with this today, but it's very, very important that you get a good mix of compost and soil, and it has to be free draining as well. Approximately around about 25, 30 centimeters of soil. So if you have got an old planter, if you've got an old window box that you want to fill with this incredibly striking plant, then you can do so. You can plant in amongst it as well. So you could have some incredible edibles going. You could grow things like your alliums or your decorative plants as well. So you get the best of both worlds if you can use it in a window box. When do you start to see it growing? Over the course of about 10 to 14 days, you'll start to see that juvenile plant appear. That's when you want to make sure that you keep watering it and then you can feed it as well. Just give it a, a small amount of something like a tomato feed would be absolutely perfect for this. If you want to move it out, I would wait until the plant is about 10 centimeters tall and then you're free to plant it out into the beds and the borders. And then once it's out here, it pretty much looks after itself, save for the fact that you might want to keep coming back time and time again to munch on those lovely tender leaves. Now, if you are going to start grazing, it's good to graze once the plant looks like a plant. What I mean by that, it's around about 25 centimeters in width and you've got enough of a leaf to pick. Start picking from the outside. Just use a standard cutting knife or just give it a twist in the tear. But if you have got some scissors or a cutting knife, it'll make sure there's a healthier, cleaner cut and the plant is likely to, to grow back much more healthily. Constant grazing will promote constant growth with this thing. And there's a whole myriad of colors to go out. Now this is quite tame in comparison to some of them. Some of them are really show off. They're kind of vibrant yellows, there's purples, there's pinks, there's reds. And that extends not just through the vein of the plant, but also into the leaf as well. So again, if you're looking for something interesting, but also edible, growing low down and swamping an area with edible color, this is a great go-to plant. Come the end of the season, when it starts getting cooler, you might want to keep the plants protected. So you can cut the plant back to its core, overdress with some straw, or if you want to leave it over the winter underneath a cloche, that'll protect it from the elements, and then it's good to go next growing season. Weeds want to get in on the act. And there's something else that wants to get in on the act too. That's those pesky pigeons, those sneaky snails, and those fairly annoying flies. And we'll be showing you how to protect all of your hard work and the fruits of your labor in the next episode. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and share, show that you care and leave a comment below and we'll catch you in our next episode of Enjoy Your Outdoor Space. I don't even know the name of my own program. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying being in my outdoors. I'm enjoying embracing my outdoor space. I can't multitask, there's too many weeds. You go now, check out the link at the end of the video.